we've got the prestige he him in pennsylvania would like to talk about their experiences with ufos man i would love it Hello. if aliens were visited visiting here so what have you got yeah. for us the prestige well this is this goes back hi jim uh listen to you all hey. the time and well, uh you. john i think i you're you you do the skeptic thing right that's right yeah yeah on uh, i try to yeah, I know. I, I just I see I see you too. I, I watch your uh, YouTube as well. Okay, I'll be really quick. I don't want to take up too much time. You um, can take as much uh, time as you want. Come on. Okay, very good. Well, um, this goes back to the late '60s, and I was a wee little lad. <laughs> right. I'm uh, older now, obviously. Now this is about. I guess I was about seven years old. And uh, I was sleeping. My brother slept. We had twin beds, and my uh, my brother was in one, and I was another. And in the middle of the night, um, he wakes me up, and he's kneeling. And there's at the, at the at the foot of our beds are windows, and I had my separate window, and he had his. He was kneeling at the top of his bed on the mattress, looking out the window with his elbows on the sill. Uh, it was mm -hmm. very Spielberg esque, and he was looking out the window, and he called me over and said. John, look at this. And he, it was like three o'clock in the morning. And uh, he woke up before me. I don't know what woke him up, but he brings me over. I join him in the same position and we're looking out of our windows into the dark all the way down our street toward the cul-de-sac. And there's this cul-de-sac at the end. Mm -hmm. it's, it is absolutely pitch dark, but for at the top of the tree line toward the sky, there were two large iridescent orbs, opalescent mm -hmm. in color. And okay. they're with variable uh, changing light complexions, opalescent. So you mm -hmm. can think of pastels in the cool range, grays. And we were mm -hmm. transfixed watching these things for a minute, two minutes, and we were not afraid. There was nothing right. about this that struck fear into us at all. We were just watching them with great, great wonder until we got bored. And then we went back to yeah. sleep. Now, 20 years later, <laughs> I shouldn't say 20 years later, maybe it was 30 <laughs> years later, oh, okay, wow. at, a at a Christmas gathering before we had sold the family house, maybe one of the last ones, and we're standing in a, a room, a large cathedral hall room, and ceiling room, and I looked at my brother, and I said, remember the orbs? And he turned to me with frightening eyes and said, what was that? Because we hadn't spoken about it since the first, that time. Yeah. And right. we were both shaking with, with the... <laughs> <laughs> and we just said, what the hell is that? And then we had to explain to everyone around us what we had witnessed when we were kids. Right, um, right. Anyway, uh, okay. I met up with my brother uh, this past two years, and, I said, and I, I said to him, listen, there could be any number of explanations for this that we don't know. You know, right. it could, it, who knows? I mean, there could be electricity arcing in the, in the, the transformer, above the, the thing and maybe it created that effect and he was going no 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 they were definitely aliens definitely aliens. <laughs> we think he's very very conservative and i'm very very liberal so i don't know if that has right. anything to do with it anyway that's my that's my <laughs> story <laughs> i like yeah, it it's well, a good story yeah. but the, how how it, so you're you're sorry Jim, i'm just gonna jump in and then I'll, okay. I'll pass to you but so okay. you 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 don't believe that it was aliens you're still at the ufo i can't explain this it's an unidentified flying object that i have no idea, I, no idea what it, it is. well I'll, I'll put it this way there are more things in heaven and hell that are <laughs> trumped up in my philosophy <laughs> i think we i think yeah. we what we call supernatural might be just the natural order that we don't understand there's right. there are things in matter and energy that we do we have not uh, uh, penetrated and so whatever might seem supernatural to us might very well be, have a very, very natural explanation. And it might not be any of the natural explanations that we would come up with. Mm -hmm. It would probably take novel, testable predictions to find those things out in time. But they don't occur very often. So how could you really test for something which doesn't occur? Now, if we can recreate it in a laboratory right. and say, look, an orb, we might have something, you know, to, to work with. 
So I'm going to stay skeptical and say, no, <laughs> my brother can right. say, well, let's live that fantasy out. He can, but I won't, but that's how like, that's, that's, that's what I bring to it. Um, still extremely mysterious. Still, there's, there's no doubt about it. It was a Hollywood effect. It was just amazing. Right. And we weren't afraid. Well, yeah. Well, one of the interesting things uh, growing up as an Air Force brat and growing up um, near Air Force bases, um, most of it, I grew up around uh, Strategic Air Command, which was B 52s, but when, uh, which are way mm. too big and, and ungainly for this to happen at night. But when I was at Dias, uh, my dad was stationed at Dias, the B 1B was being bedded down at the time. And one of the really cool things about that aircraft was it was small enough and well camouflaged enough that night takeoffs you could really only see the afterburners um once you're a certain mm. distance away from it uh, or the engines not the afterburners mm. but, um, but the engines and mm-hmm. they look exactly kind of like you described um and at distance mm-hmm. they, they didn't look nearly as bright but as it was taking off and maneuvering it looks like two aircraft two glowing aircraft that are doing things that are physically impossible for aircraft to do, except they're mm-hmm, on the mm-hmm. back of an aircraft doing this stuff. And you're not seeing the whole aircraft and your brain is just mm-hmm. filling in some details for you. Um, mm-hmm. And so if you don't see the whole aircraft, it re- you know, I was used to seeing them on their takeoff and, and landing approaches. And so I knew what they were, but if I didn't know, yeah. I could very easily mistake those for, for, unidentified flying objects moving in ways that aren't right. consistent with what we understand the laws of physics for a ball of light, because that's what they look like. And this is the problem with depending on our eyes for a lot of information is because yeah. there's all kinds of effects that can happen, right? If you have a, yeah. a, a heat, if hotter air in between you, hot air can act as a lens um, and yeah. things like that. So you know, it could be a couple of different things. It could have been two helicopters working close together on something, um, you yeah. know, with, with a yeah. main light under underneath each of them. And from the right angles that you wouldn't see the helicopter and you wouldn't necessarily hear it if it's far enough away. Um, and yeah. with the, the other thing with, with the B1 and uh, F-15s um, tended to do this as well. Uh, if you weren't at the right angle, um, you might not hear a B1 go by. Um, because of the way oh. the acoustics were, it flew right over. I was a lifeguard at the time, and it flew right over the pool as it was making an approach when it first bedded down. And it was a mile or two at least downrange before we heard it. So it was completely silent right. all the way through until we heard it. And uh, the F 15 did, didn't do it to the same extent, but there are places in ways that you might not hear a jet engine going if it's far enough away add a little bit of lensing effect from the atmosphere and all of a sudden you've got this really weird thing happening. Um, there, wow. um, Jag even yeah. did, uh, the, the old TV show Jag um, did an episode where they showed exactly how an huh. F-14 Tomcat going through aerial maneuvers could look like two dancing lights doing things against the laws of physics. Oh. But when you sharpen up the image... Yeah and you can actually see the F-14, you realize exactly what it is. It's just a pair of afterburners doing yeah. exactly what the guy right. described. So it's yeah. interesting. It'd be you, interesting um, to... Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I was going to say, um, even even phenomena we are familiar with, let's say at ground level, for instance, the Fata Morgana yeah. uh, um, uh, 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 optical effect at sea, where the objects seem as if they're floating on clouds above the horizon line, right? Mm-hmm. And or the uh, the if, if you're familiar with photography, using a long lens which compresses the background into the foreground, you can actually uh, create distortions at ground level. I used to work at Battery in, in Battery Park, New York, uh, 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 teaching, and I used to go uh, uh, walk to the Battery Park all the time and look at the um, the um, uh, Statue of Liberty out on the harbor. Now. From the building itself at Battery, through the window, it appeared to be tiny. But as I walked toward it at Battery Park, it became enormous. And it was a complete optical effect. It was an atmospheric effect that it appeared larger. And so these are the tricks that happen in atmospheres. So, um, yeah, I mean, and those are not even flying objects. You know, that's a 
at right. sea and on land, or kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah anyway, I, it's fun to share that. I, I, um, I remember watching a show as well, because you were talking about shows there, Jim. Um, uh, there was this thing where uh, a guy wanted to trick some people in a town that he, you know, there was a, a flying saucer, an actual alien craft was visiting the town. And he made this thing that was about six feet across. Um, and he, he flew it up with like helium and a fan just to get it, you know, in into the sky. And uh, he made a point that because there was nothing uh, around the aircraft to, to help uh, people guess the perspective, you know, how far or close it was, people were seeing um, a craft that was, you know, hundreds of meters across because they looked up and saw this, couldn't right. hear anything. So their, their ears were saying, well, it, it's got to be far away because I can't hear anything. But it's huge because of, you know, how much space it's taking up. And things like that are fascinating. Just yeah. wanted to drop that in there. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, these, I mean, uh, uh, Jim, you just, you just said it with all of the, your experience uh, in aviation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, it's the, yeah. it's the, it's what the atmosphere does. It it, it compresses, it distorts light. It just it, it hits our eyes differently at the horizon levels. It does as we go look up straight up. Um, um, so anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, I really yeah. wish it may it was the visitation of some sort of <laughs> yeah. You know how would how do you think your brother but, would um how do you think your brother would react to that explanation? Well, put it this way: he's uh, he still supports Donald Trump, so he'll believe anything. Say no more. Yeah. We, we, we won't be talking add. about that on this show. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Like, no, you're fine. You're fine. No, no. Thank you so no, much, Christine. That was great. No, no. no you're good. No, that was, a, that was no, just a personal <laughs> opinion. No, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you so much.